I think it's really important that people start out playing safe. So, so we want to first just, one. <laughs> we want to start with. Obviously, <laughs> it's gonna be. The girls are still wearing their clothing, unfortunately. A fantasy of mine is like a gang bang. That's just hot to me. This week, uh, we have a Tara topic. We're going to talk about being... Tara topic. It's a Tara topic. Okay, <laughs> so, bitches. Love you. Wow. And our game sauce. Tara gets saucy. Welcome to Sex Uninterrupted with Tara and James. I'm Tara, and I'm your sexy, swinging lifestyle host tonight. We are here to empower you to explore your sexuality and learn more about non-traditional relationships. The Swinger Lifestyle has transformed our life. Meeting each other has shattered everything we thought about normal relationships. Maneuvering our way through non-monogamy has transformed our view on sexuality, relationships, and sex. We produce a show every week for your listening pleasure, and our sponsors make this all possible. We truly appreciate their generosity and everything they do to support us. If you're interested in sponsoring our show, contact us at sex.uninterrupted at gmail.com. And if you like our show, get social with us. We're always available online. Our Instagram is sex.uninterrupted and Twitter is sxuninterrupted. We also have a Facebook like page. If you go to our website, sexuninterrupted.com, you can find all the links and deets. So this is typically our smoke show, but we are not having one because this is a special episode. I'm inviting three amazing women to help me out in hosting this show. James is not here. We are going to be sharing the woman's perspective on all things related to consensual non-monogamy. And boy, am I excited to do this. It's just a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get us right into it. This is our first segment. And like I said, I have three women here who are going to talk about non-monogamy because they are in the lifestyle. The, who wants to go first? I, <laughs> I was going to do introductions first so that... The listeners kind of have an idea of who you are, kind of how you got into the lifestyle, um, what your relationship status is like. And first we have Jules. Hi, <laughs> I'm Jules and I found the lifestyle in 2010 in Vegas and kind of mm. I literally accidentally tripped and fell into a party and was really curious about it and met some people that kind of showed me the lay of the land and after that I knew I'd kind of been in the right place at the right time for the first time so I've explored the lifestyle single in relationships single again back in relationships and now I'm kind of back in the it's complicated slash single land at the moment <laughs> so you have some good insight I think so, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that people will appreciate that, definitely. Um, next, Annalie. Hi, uh, my name is Annalie, and I am pretty much what you would call a lifer. Um, I've <laughs> been in non-monogamous relationships since I was 16. I have actually never entered a relationship with a monogamy thought process, I've always known I was bi, so that's always played a very important part of my sexual decisions. I'm presently single, which they would call unicorn, and of course that has been something a part of my life for the last 15 years. I've been dating couples, so there's lots of uh, powerful knowledge in years of experience there. My vision at the moment in the lifestyle is I hold space for all women who are actively pursuing their own freedom in their sexuality and relationships. So I'm proud to be a woman and I'm proud to be here with these women. I'm so happy to have you. That was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we also have Natasha on the show today. (laughs) I'm Natasha. Um, I feel like I'm fairly new. However, I kind of have this history. Um, I knew since I was a little girl that I was bi, but I didn't really, like, identify that until I was already in my early 30s. Um, But (laughs) my dad was a nudist, (laughs) so we, like, had a cottage in, like, a... Back then, you would call it a nudist colony. It sounds so weird. (laughs) No, this is great. I love no, it. no, this is my big. This, weird this is my big weird drunk at a party thing where I say, "When I was five years old, that was Mini Princess of Crocus Cove Nudes Colony," and people go, "What?" I love to shock people. I told you. You told me. God. 
So, it's kind of, there's been, like, this, like, thing that's gone throughout my life that I didn't really understand until I was maybe old enough to, like, identify with it. Mm -hmm. So, not only that, um, where we had our stint with having a cottage where people were naked, um, my dad, I also found out later in life that he was a swinger. Oh. So, I knew that. I didn't know that. Okay. I knew that. And I never really processed it. I never rejected it. And I never accepted it. I just kind of, I was like, okay, he was a swinger. Like, like avoided it almost. No, I just, I just never like asked questions. I never like, so that comes into play because later in life, when you kind of have aha moments, you start to connect dots throughout your life, which I'm trying to do right now. And you're like, oh, okay, this all makes sense where I've landed here now. So um, I would say you guys spoke at um, Taboo and told your story, and you guys said, has anyone here cheated in a monogamous relationship? And when I thought back, I'm like, I have never been faithful in a monogamous relationship like it kind of clued in that day I was like so I've had that non-monogamy kind of thing I don't know how to say it blueprint almost yeah it's a good way to say it yeah Yeah. I think me too yeah so I was in a monogamous relationship and during that time we experimented and had some threesomes which I loved because I was bisexual and now finally I was getting to experience other women um and then I started to get more curious about it and did some online researching and discovered that Calgary had a community and there were clubs is that when you found me that's when I basically found you well no not the first time not the first time so I was still in this toxic relationship prior to the one I'm in now she was very jealous and controlling, and I was secretly going online and le- learning more about connecting the dots. Oh, my dad was a swimmer. That's what this is. And da 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 da. Like, I just was excited about it and I wanted to learn more. But then I also didn't have the freedom to. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sharing that with my partner. My partner, that wouldn't have been something we could mm-hmm. do together at all. So I kind of went on the back burner. So when I finally left this relationship and I was on my own, healing, having time to myself, not dating, not having sex or anything like that. Finally, when I was ready not to date, but to be intimate, I was like, oh yeah, there's that website I found. So I went back to it. And that's also when I found Sex Mm -hmm. Uninterrupted and found the podcast, started listening. And, uh, I was like, I'm gonna give back to the community because when I was in, when I was a couple, I wanted a single female. So now I'm gonna be that single female because what? it actually felt really? safer to yeah, me. Absolutely. I didn't want to go on Tinder and have yeah. men creeping on me. I didn't want that. I just came out of I love a couple couple God, ten. I feel I like too. the opposite of me. I never was the unicorn because I thought it was so unsafe. Oh. Really? Oh, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, no, I felt I would rather absolutely. hook up with somebody from the bar. I didn't oh, yeah. yeah. That wasn't safe for me. And I was like, I just had this controlling person for ten years. Like it was ugh. I want to be in control and I want to feel safe and I don't want any commitment. And so I started <laughs> that way yeah that makes sense mm-hmm. I like that yeah for me I think it was I just didn't have enough information about the lifestyle I didn't know that it was so safe that you know couples do technically cherish unicorns and they don't put them in well not all but some couples they usually take care of them and they don't oh I've had for an sure. amazing treatment from yeah. couples so have I I've had gifts I've had incredible experiences I've been taken away on weekends uh-huh. I've gone to cabins in the woods for weekends you know I've been treated so well as a unicorn I have never felt unsafe ever so it's pretty a blessing for as a woman to find their sexuality and share it with a couple mm. there's there's the best of both worlds, they say, but there is something so honorable that a couple wants you. Yeah. There is something so amazing <clears throat> that of all the women that they meet and, and have that process, you know, you were the one that they, they want to. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, for me, I've had more one, the first time they've ever been with a woman, that's my higher percentage 
I don't know. I, I guess I go for the the newbies. The newbies. <laughs> well, my I mean, and I don't want to sound like I'm still experienced because I'm not. Because it was quite small and limited. It was like this six week period of time from well being single and I don't want to have sex with anyone. I need to have this time to myself. Yeah. I don't can't imagine being having sex to boom, I need to have sex and I need to have it now. (laughs) And then boom, I'm doing this. And then it was like this six week time period. And then I met Mm. my guy who like, we, we kind of had a history. So we reconnected, That's awesome. but I told him right from day one about the lifestyle Mm -hmm. and about what I was doing. I'm like having sex with couples and it's very nonchalant and that didn't scare him away. (laughs) So now we're navigating, so I've been with him about a year and a half, just over, and now we're navigating this together for the mm-hmm. first time in a couple relationships. So everything I've had was, con- like, I don't know what I'm doing, to I'm in control, I'm singles, but now I'm doing this with the person I love more than anything. So, yeah. That's a powerful transition that you've gone through. Yeah. yeah. I think I, if I wish for everyone, I wish for that whole transition. I wish it for everyone too because now I'm experiencing it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it also teaches you the power of being um, self-aware. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where Hugely. there's such a mistake as people enter the lifestyle of not being self-aware. So you've gone through such an amazing turn of events, really, that have cultured such a powerful, powerful woman in your own relationship. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And he's somebody who is was in the right place at the right time as well and um he's very understanding That's and key, hey, the right place at the right time yeah. for the guy as well yeah mm-hmm. so we're ta- you know we're taking i think we're pretty baby steps <laughs> And that's okay. That's fine. You go at the pace of whatever There's no you feel right or wrong with. way to And we're learning that as we go along. <laughs> so well, I think we live in an instant society. Yes. So everything yeah. needs to be instant. Yeah. And we are not instant human beings. No. Um, so stop being one. Yes, so. it's true. Um, there was something that was brought up. So I know I'm bi, you're bi. Mm-hmm. You're bi. Are you bi, Jules? I am for sure. I yeah. find like the the title bisexual I don't love because I find that a lot of people outside of the lifestyle feel that means that you would date a woman much like you would date a man and I'm only romantically involved with men but definitely sexually bisexual. So that's kind of I, yeah, I think the, the titles and I mean within the lifestyle there's like bi comfortable, bi situational, bi curious, bi this, bi that, bi everything and to me like a lot of them can often have the same definition it just depends what the person resonates with and and the words get so confusing so I think that's sometimes important to explain but but definitely sexually I am for yeah. sure I find yeah majority of women are um okay well thank you ladies for sharing all that information about yourselves I'm sure the listeners really appreciate that the openness and the honesty because um, somebody else could be listening and be exactly in your shoes where you were five years ago. So thank you. Uh, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. Have you checked out season six, episode seven of CNN's original series, This is the Life with Lisa Ling? She covered what a taste of Nadia and Nolans was like. They followed us around for some cool interviews and tickets are now selling out fast for 2020. You won't want to miss this amazing event. As king and queen of Naughty Nolens 2019, we will be returning to hand off our crowns and we want you to join. Come to New Orleans with us July 8th to 12th, 2020 and see why we keep coming back every year. When you get your tickets through us, we will send you a personal thank you email and add you to our NIN mailing list to help you prepare for 2020. Visit sexuninterrupted.com slash naughty and book today. Have you ever heard of SDC.com. It is a site that is open-minded and hosts an educational platform and a dating platform. They also have pretty sick events. We like to use the site for Young Swinger Week prep groups, and they have tons of other sweet groups you can join. Check it out today and use the promo code 32473 when you sign up. Welcome back to Sex Uninterrupted. Today, it's just Tara. So I brought 
three amazing women onto the show. We are talking about what non-monogamy means to us and kind of how it plays a role in our lives. Um, We just finished sharing a little bit about ourselves, which was great. And next, I kind of wanted to drive the conversation towards what the lifestyle has done for you, really. What, What it's brought into your life. What are some of the benefits? What are some of the things that you didn't know that that in, involved the lifestyle. Like for me, for example, I didn't know that friendships were such a big part in the lifestyle. I didn't know that I was going to make all these friends that finally accepted me for myself. I don't know. Anybody else feel that way? I feel like there's a certain level of ownership. You know, when you meet someone, they say, oh, you're in the lifestyle. There's this common denominator that even though I don't believe in like-minded, I believe in open-minded because our like mind are not all alike. There's so many different avenues under the umbrella of cult lifestyle. So we have to be careful not to line ourselves up with people that may not actually be lining Mm ourselves. But there's such an ownership really on the basis of the fact that people honor that, that lifestyle name. So it doesn't mean that they are honorable. It just means there's a sense of respect that you know that you're part of a a community that is so much bigger than you. Yeah. And I think that's, for me, what's changed my life um, is entering a community and understanding that this isn't just about me. This isn't just about my decisions. This isn't just about my sexual happiness. This is about what can I give back. What can I give back to the community as um, someone who follows, you know, and respects and adores and and wants people to find freedom? So that's probably what's... That's me too. (laughs) You know that. Yes. (laughs) We can all walk a plane. Uh, Jules? I find for sure you you make great friendships. And I would say most of my strong friendships, definitely not all, but most are within the lifestyle or other people that have found the lifestyle through kind of me introducing it to them or um, they introduce it to just different paths, I suppose. But um, definitely the friendships are very strong. And I think that that's almost more important than the sex. And that's, Mm -hmm. I have lots of friends within the lifestyle that I've never played with. And and perhaps they, you know, we're not interested in each other or whatever the reason. And we're strong friends that share this thing we call the lifestyle. So I think that yeah, yeah, that's very that important. Ownership. And it, really, it, you don't have exactly. to have sex. No, to totally. Be, you know, compatible in friendship. Totally. You know, like and then nice. sometimes you yes. do have sex yes. and that's great too. It is a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bonus. You know, I think those sex is such a, they're such a, you know, part of the pie, right? If you look at the whole of the lifestyle, I mean, there's so many people go, I, if I don't have sex tonight, it's okay because I've met great people. Yeah. Like, you know, so when you take that pressure off of having sex with people, you get down to being that vulnerable person that actually creates friendships and quality. Um, I think it's powerful. I also think I didn't realize how good sex could be. Like, I've had some pretty crazy <laughs> nights <laughs> of, like, nothing used yeah. to compare to, like, like I said, I would pick up guys at the club or something and like that's okay sex and you really don't know what you're gonna get or which can be interesting as well and can be exciting and and I think too as you kind of grow especially within the lifestyle I find you know what women know what they need more so they can communicate that better and even if it is a one night stand it's gonna be better than a one night stand perhaps earlier in life when they weren't confident enough to say hey listen this is what I want it was just a train wreck (laughs) <laughs> well, I was figuring I think when that you're, out. When you're in the lifestyle, you actually pursue knowledge. Yes, mm-hmm. you, I agree. You start to want more knowledge about why you're you're wanting this. Yeah. So it, without actually entering the lifestyle, a lot of people are stuck in this this spinning wheel of just their you know their life exists based over and over of the same thing. Where I think a lot of people in the lifestyle actually start to create the want and the desire to know more and so expand and expand your mind you expand your soul you expand your heart there's there's challenges there's shit that comes up from your past that you think you're over and done with but you're not there's so many avenues that the lifestyle just reaches down and touches a part of you and you you have to grow yeah you cannot stay stagnant in the lifestyle no yeah for me being newer I guess and in a relationship 
it's more about our communication with each other and talking about being finding a safe place, I guess, when you're having those conversations, like what, I guess, what your rules and boundaries are, what you feel comfortable with, what what your some of your desires are or what your fantasies are. So it's opened up our, like, in a, being in a new relationship and then also mm-hmm. discovering the lifestyle at the same time has really forced us right from the beginning to like have those tough conversations that maybe some couples after five years oh, are just going to yeah. start entering into and um, we're a couple who aren't really having like the experiences that you guys are having at this time like we're not having sex with people but we're getting to know people it's camera and, and sex well what I meant was I totally what I meant like by know that, that journey was just that you. we're not even like we're so new that we're like and we're like so on the edge here so what we're doing is like attending socials and everything is more conversational and more about discovery self-discovery yeah, discovery as a couple learning from conversations that we're having or from posts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of posts. posts and also podcasts. A lot of posts. <laughs> um, and that's totally like it doesn't matter where you are in the lifestyle. Absolutely. You can be where we are, where we're just like toes, toes in the water. Mm-hmm. Like we're yeah. s- we're still in. Like we still bought into it. Like this open non monogamous. Yeah, it's a journey. And Absolutely. So that's exciting. Like you know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. I, we talk about how sometimes, like, we, we talk so much about things, and then when we talk about, well, if that actually happened, it's like, oh, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, that's so exhilarating. Like, I'll yeah, give you I know. The, I'll give you the signal. <laughs> Just watch for my signal. <laughs> no, but I was reading your, um, your blogs to him, your recent blogs on... I guess on Patreon. On Patreon. And I was like, mm-hmm. these are fun to read. I was reading them, and it's like, Ooh. <laughs> what if it happened? Yeah, I was like, oh, it's so fun to read. But then if you apply it to us, it's like, wait. <laughs> like, that's the threesome one that I but just that's, posted. That's so powerful. Oh, no, that one's good. <laughs> I can handle if that one. If you don't actually <laughs> talk about the things that are going to fall apart, yeah. never mind the things that are going to be successful. If you don't talk about the things that fall apart, you will never be able to handle the things that fall apart. Yeah. Yes. And if you shut down, which so many people do emotionally and that and. You, do, you shut down to a point where you can't even talk about it because it was never talked about before. Right. Then you go into this whole shame part and and wonder if that's valid and if, how can we never thought about that? We just always were full on train that, you know, we go plowing through something that this is all going to be successful. You know, one of the most responsible things a couple can do is talk about what if something yeah. happens, mm-hmm. yeah. especially in the disaster end of it. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we cannot control other people. And that's a big thing that we have to remember that we're not in this based on a, just a couple or alone or whatever. Yes. You have no control over someone else's response or some couple or group of people that's mm-hmm. going to respond to you. And you have to prepare it in what happens in that whole process. Mm-hmm. I think that's powerful that you, even though you think you're only dipping your toes, you're so far ahead than most couples yeah. I think I have ever talked to as being new. Yeah. So good on you. And I think the nice thing about the lifestyle too is it is what you make it and how you define it. Exactly. And when I say that when I found it, I felt like I was in the right place at the right time for the first time. Right. That's when it became okay to define my own box and not have society give me this box yeah. to fit in. Yeah. So and whether that's for each and every relationship or different phases as somebody who's single in the lifestyle mm-hmm. and single in general in life, yeah. like I can write my own rules and they can exactly. evolve and change as wanted and needed whether I'm single or in a relationship. Yeah. So I think the key thing as a new person and probably for everyone is this whole idea of expectations and like when you're first learning about something or going into it head first or however you're doing it just take away the expectations and just like l- let it be an experience or a journey like you said and just enjoy what's happening and just don't have the expectations that was like drilled into my head from podcasts or from whatever but then as soon as I was with my the person I loved the most all of a sudden expectations would just come it was just it's natural yeah. I think you just think about that and then if you just have to take a step back and be like let's have no expectations yeah. and just let this happen naturally and so it's actually been really fun that's great mm-hmm. I like that do you guys think you'd ever um 
go back to a vanilla? Oh, no. Life? Could you? No. 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 I don't no. think I could. No, no, no. I reserve my response. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. You, you, said, you didn't even come literally. from a vanilla. You just said I know, right? Your I, was born, I was born this way. I don't even know. If I, if I, there's so much I would have to like, I guess you know, I take out of my life. Too, I was born this way. I knew I was by I'm second I generation. Was yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm not going to be apologizing anymore for the fact that I was born this way for so many reasons mm-hmm. other than just being by. So. Well, and I think it becomes part of your identity and not for everybody, but. I think to a certain extent, whether, you know, it's being active within the lifestyle or wanting to attend parties or choosing those types of resorts and traveling that way, it, I wouldn't be able to completely leave it behind the, you know, the the exact rule book, like I said, can change depending on the circumstances, but yeah. Absolutely. It's there to stay. I think you grow. So yes. when, you, and when you grow, you evolve. And when you evolve, you change your perspective on things. You change your idea of what you want, what you need. And, you know, who you are five years into the lifestyle is definitely not the per- first person that no, you were looking God. in the mirror on that first, you know, journey. Oh, my God. And thank no. God, because mm-hmm. if you're not growing in this, then I, you know... You've got some stagnant energy that is just not that inviting. Our little quote that <laughs> we <sense>. use. <laughs> just, just as new people like navigating it all. There's a quote that we stole from, I think it's this, um, We Got a Thing okay. from, from their podcast. Yeah. They say, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. So I told that to him. And so every once in a while, he said, he'll say, he'll repeat that back to me for, if we're not having fun, Aww. we're doing it wrong. Yeah. So we try to keep that. That's a powerful check-in. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. yeah. I think that we are, we need to go to a commercial break actually right now. So we're going to head over to what our sponsors have to say. And when we get back, we're going to talk about tips, advice from women for women. I didn't screw it up. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Our Patreon community has got it going on. We recently revamped our entire community and frequently are sharing all kinds of bonus and exclusive content with our members. It's the only platform we share the more intimate side of ourselves, and we even have Kristen, the independent unicorn, on a guest tier. You guys will love her. Membership started only $5 a month and gives you access to our steamy blog, the video version of many of our shows, never-before-seen photos, the opportunity to join our monthly live smoke show, and much more. Not only that, you are directly supporting us, which means we get to invest more into Sex Uninterrupted and get things like a new video recorder or computer for video editing. Visit patreon.com slash sex uninterrupted and choose a membership tier today. We are a busy couple. When we aren't working on a radio show, you can find us hosting events and travel in the world. Downtime and connection is important to us, and that's why we're so happy to have a high massager in our house. The High Massager is a unique personal massager that can be used fully clothed. It helps men and women relax amazingly fast and has the power to give women some of the most intense orgasms ever. We love decompressing in the evenings with ours and it gives us a deep and restful sleep that we need to keep our energy high. Want to get one of your own? We were able to hook our listeners up with $100 US off when you use the code SEXUNINTERRUPTED with no spaces at checkout. Go to sexuninterrupted.com slash sex toy shop to get yours today. And you are listening to Sex Uninterrupted with only Tara today. Again, I have three amazing women on the show. I keep calling you guys amazing because I can't think of another <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> so we're going to stick with it the whole show. We think show. you're amazing. So. Yes. yes. Okay, Thank four amazing for women. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're talking about our lives in non-monogamy land. So um, I think a good thing to talk about is tips and advice because we're all at different stages in the lifestyle journey. And I think we all can share some insight because like guys, I get asked questions all the time. So this, there's so many women out there who want the help, the support, the guidance and who feel like you used to feel before you found this life. And so, so let's, let's give them some good, (laughs) good pieces of advice. advice. Yeah. 
All right. So for me, um, this is my area of passion is um, women, women that in so many different ways. And I know that's the same thing with you, Tara, Mm -hmm. your your passion for women and finding their own sexuality um, is beautiful. And I always admire your ability to put yourself out there like that too Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I respect women and I want women to respect women I think ultimately the lifestyle will 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 challenge you in how you perceive your relationships with women oh my god yes and ultimately I think sometimes um from a newbie perspective to um someone that's in it for five years or someone that's now been in 10 15 20 25 or have always been a lifer I think there's a one rule that we need to really really understand as we get going and become more um mature in it is to remember that you were a newbie at once Mm-hmm. And that that kindness that was shown to you as a newbie from other women is your opportunity to be that to someone else. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately women need to step up and be more kind, more accepting, more forgiving, more in a way of going, I was here once too. Mm-hmm. And validate us women as women of going, you know what, we all have body issues. We all have our own self-worth issues. We all have jealousy issues. We all have these things that I'm standing here too. I'm not fucking perfect. And to know that we can, you know, stand hand in hand with another woman, that we can be emotionally and physically open with, that we need to look at when we started and what that meant when someone came along was kind it's and generous. It's so true. That's so beautiful. So, yes, as a, from a woman to another woman, um, remember. Yeah. You are an ambassador for that as well in the Thank community, you. I would yes. have to say. Yeah. yeah. That's my passion. I reckon that I'm sure everyone like recognizes you for that. So. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, it's, you know, we're... We're coming a long way. Like we are watching a movement that's happening within our whole world, not just, you know, the lifestyle. But I also think because of that movement, movement, we are introducing so many more to the lifestyle is because yes. they're finally women are finally standing, standing up and going, I don't need this to be a woman and I won't be treated like this to be a woman. And in that movement, there's such an enormous cracking open of women's spirits that they are searching for answers they are searching for you know guidance they're searching for other women to stand with them Mm -hmm. and welcome to the lifestyle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is such a powerful thing you're allowed to be who you are you're authentic Authentic. yourself Mm -hmm. as you would say with no apology yeah I think there is a big shift going on like not just in lifestyle but absolutely in the world world, a lot of feminine energy is rising up. watch the Victoria's Secret fashion show. No, I watched some of it. Oh, I didn't yeah. watch it. That's no. like, that is tradition. I don't watch it. I don't watch it. Like watch Christmas TV, tradition. So. Well, we don't have TV either. We had to watch it online, but they were, um, me and my partner were saying, like at the beginning of the show, they were really trying to champion that of, of woman being strong and independent. It's kind of the Me Too movement. How did you feel, like think about that? I like I said, I only caught bits and pieces of it. Oh, and, like see. Adriana was like that was her last oh, okay. show, so I saw kind of like that part. But um, yeah, I mean, I have watched it a lot in the past, and I find it's I quite enjoy it for the most part. Like in past years, anyways, it's a good representation of women, while not necessarily representing all types of women. So. I don't know. I think it's so basically at the beginning of the show, they were interviewing some of the models and it was along the tone of what we're talking about, where it was about being a strong woman and being sexy. And it's not for men, as one of the models said, yeah. we're not here to be sexy for men. We're here because this is like our authentic self. She didn't say those yeah. words. But yeah. That's really what you conveyed. So we thought that was kind of cool. That is cool. It was interesting in such a butchered part of society yeah to have women within it still come out extremely strong for other women Mm -hmm. because ultimately what you know we as women are so connected in our energy that we don't want 
we don't want to do to another woman. Well, technically, we shouldn't do to another woman what you wouldn't want to be done to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is where life in the vanilla world mm-hmm. changes remarkably in the lifestyle where yes. women start to question and understand and I've had more women say I have never trusted women I have never trusted women in a relationship and I find I have more women relationships now than I have ever in my life Mm -hmm. why it's because we've transferred that energy to be truthful to be open to be kind to say to women you're beautiful and actually mean it Mm -hmm. because you're getting that back Mm -hmm. so it's it's a powerful trend that's happening and it's happening a lot more in the lifestyle because women are standing up for women even if they're not bi i don't i think that's a big misconception too is that you have to be bi to be in the lifestyle Mm -hmm. yes it's very difficult because a lot of women are wanting to experience their sexuality doesn't mean they end up bi Right? There's a lot of women that want to experience something and they experience and go, ah, no, that wasn't for me. Yeah. So there are straight women. So I want to reach out to even the straight women that are listening, going, you don't have to be bi to be in, in the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you have to be is self-aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you have to be is aware what yes means and what no means. Yeah. And in your partnership of talking all about the things right that, that's good advice that comes in that whole perspective of what's going to work to what happens if it doesn't mm-hmm. so that's i think yeah that's important to bring up you don't have to be a bi woman to be in the lifestyle no. actually one of the girls i wanted to have here she she isn't bisexual so i wanted to get that insight so yeah. i thought that yeah. would be a good one but maybe next round we'll do that which is very powerful because because lifestyle is viewed so much about sexuality, there's a lot of bi women or women who don't understand a straight woman. Yes. Yeah. Agree. And it's like, well, let's take a step back. Let's look at when you weren't bi, right? There's a certain element of... What? Under- <laughs> Well, there's a lot of women. Well, there's a lot of women that oh, are like in the lifestyle girls. that never knew that they were bi until they were in the lifestyle. Yeah, like I, I had no attraction I to mean, women. I and, br- well, I, I brought that up earlier. That I've known since I was a little girl yeah, that I denied true. that yeah. part of myself. Where you almost, and I think maybe gay people go through that too, is yeah. where you try to reject that part of yourself yeah. and be like, see that. I'm not attracted to that girl. Like you, yeah. you know. When people can be very repressed in their it's, sexual it's, desires. That's a good word. Are, yeah. I think, yeah. for the most part, at least at some stage. I, I think, yeah. Where the lifestyle creates a buffet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and But you have to be careful <laughs> at what table you're eating at. <laughs> right? Because, well, you know what? Because not everything is for everyone. And absolutely. you have to respect. Again, it comes back to understanding that these are other people. These are other souls. These are other people that are looking for the same thing you are. You can't use them. That's what you can't use them saying. at a point of for going, sure. okay, come with me. I want to, you know, this experience, I'm attracted to you. And it doesn't really, you know, involve that consent part. It's like, well, thank you very much. But no, there's an, there's a, there's an item that we're missing here. Yeah. It's called so, communication. you know, be careful of the buffet. The, the, yeah, the communication yeah. is really powerful in the lifestyle because I think in the past, my experiences prior were like all of a sudden you find yourself making out with someone and fooling around or whatever. And now in the lifestyle, you ask for consent. Yes. <laughs> you say, "Can Which I kiss, women? Can women I kiss you? you. <laughs> can I?" And that that was very like eye opening for me to have someone say, "Can I kiss you?" Or this or it's like. I'm it's glad almost you, in the vinyl, in I'm vinyla glad world. you got that though. Oh because yeah, because in the vanilla world complaints. you just go for it. Yeah. But yeah. here it's like. You talk about it, you talk about rules, yeah. you talk about boundaries, yeah. you talk about what's acceptable. And women need to still Some respect boundaries. those rules for other women. It, it's it true. Is. It is. And it's it a is learning a boundary curve. that is it's a learning curve. Often. Yes. And it's, it's something that women need to realize that you still need to ask consent it's for true. another woman. Yeah. Even with you women, You can't yes. touch her ass because mm-hmm. it's a nice ass standing in front of you. Or her yeah. boobs. That I've is, done that. So. I've, done it, I've done it too, and it's a learning we have curve to, for me. Yeah, for it's, sure. a, it's a check that you have to take, yeah. especially with alcohol. Yes. yes. If there's anything that I really push is the fact that don't drink. Yeah. I know. That's hard not to do because you need a little <laughs> bit of lubrication. That's like, okay, but there's And I'm not talking know? about the <laughs> kind you buy at the oh. sex store. <laughs> yeah, but there's the, the big challenge of can you do it without drinking? Yeah, true. 
I've done it a few times. I did um, one hotel party completely sober the entire weekend. And it was hard. The consent thing I noticed way more when I was sober, like with how people were not practicing consent. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But when I'm I've been a lawyer kind of, for many years based of, you know, the situation of, you know, being involved, watching people and making sure everything's going smoothly at events and things like that. And watching that breakdown that yes. happens over the course of, and I've been, I've been a failure at it too. So, okay. Sorry to cut you guys off. I know, I know we can go, <laughs> we can keep going. I know we could keep going. Uh, we're going to go another commercial break. And when we get back, uh, I have IG questions Great. from women that want to get them answered by women. So stay tuned. <laughs> We want to say that we know it can sometimes feel lonely navigating this world of open relationships. We know that it can be difficult to find people to talk with. We know because we've been through it. And although we certainly are not therapists or licensed psychologists, we know that sometimes all you need is just somebody to talk to. We've helped hundreds of people on their journey with non-monogamy and are passionate about helping thousands more. We offer private coaching to anyone interested in opening up their relationship and reach out to us for multiple reasons. It could be that they're struggling to get out to a club and are looking for a little extra encouragement, or they may not know how to go about discussing their fantasies and desires with their partner. Visit sexuninterrupted.com slash book online to schedule your free 10-minute one-on-one session today. Welcome back to the last segment of Sex Uninterrupted. You are listening to Tara, and I have to say it again, I have three amazing women (laughs) on the show with me today, and I'm I'm kind of sad this is our last one, but... There's plenty more. Yeah, we're going to have to do this again. I think that the flow is really, it's fun for me to be sitting here with women and not just... James all the time arguing for the spotlight (laughs) what people think we do Um, (laughs) okay so IG questions Um, I got a lot of good ones I don't know if we're going to be able to get through them all and we can just whoever wants to answer just answer and if somebody wants to add something they can do that too so the first question do you think there is a stigma for women who are in non-monogamous relationships versus men Wow. Hmm. I know. I told you. I got some good questions. I think the stigma would be that someone may think that the woman was dragged in to it Mm -hmm. by the man. I think that it's against her will. Yeah. Um, And this is is super personal, but the reason I even know that my dad was a swinger is because my mom, well, they obviously split up when I was younger. And she, like, sat me down and told me when I was 12 your dad, you know, did this and he, she felt like she was obligated right. to do it, which yeah. is unfortunate, like for her to feel like she had to go along with that. And I don't think it's for you if you're going along with it. Right. I think that it's, um, you guys spoke at Taboo and said that monogamy, non-monogamy is not for everyone. It's, it's for you or it's not for you. And I think you identify with that, just like identifying with being bi or yeah. identifying mm-hmm. with whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So, you know. And if you know, then go for it and explore. Mm-hmm. Who cares about the stigma? And see, yeah, yeah. see if Fuck it's the stigma right for you. <laughs> I think, too, if there's, like, it, being single at this time and having been single before while still exploring the lifestyle, men that are not in the lifestyle or don't understand yeah. it or perhaps don't have enough respect almost feel entitled or they feel, if I, if I do bring it up on <laughs> a first date, they feel, oh, you know, I'm getting late tonight. I This girl will do whatever I want. Like, it's, like, this sense of okay, she's obviously in that for this Open reason. For business. So yeah. the exactly, exactly, that the point. assumption, yes. Yeah. So that I would think that that's maybe the that's one that right. I That was the next more. question. Are men in the lifestyle more or less aggressive about coming on to you knowing that you are in the lifestyle? And I don't find it as much with men in the lifestyle. Sometimes, again, okay. there's always going to be margin for error and not everybody understands boundaries and sometimes people have slip-ups and we all, I'm sure we all have, like I'm not putting that I think sometimes it's how many lessons they've learned. Exactly. So, that's, <laughs> But I find, for the most part, men within the lifestyle, especially those that you see, 
see in established couples and you know they've they've gone through the learning and they respect people that doesn't happen very often um you know once in a while it yeah. does for sure somebody just doesn't get it but it's more men outside of the lifestyle not. when I'm explaining yeah. it they really don't get it yeah. no they don't and they take it to the they think it's for them too. oh you know she's <laughs> a slut or she's this or she's that or uh, even women outside of lifestyle, I find that, I mean, I kind of, there's a certain, I, I seem to wear, wear this label of, too. you know, I'm just going out having sex all the time with whoever will give it to me. And, and there are people that I consider quite close friends that just don't understand it. And they, oh, they have too. that thought because exactly. they don't yeah. understand it and, and they don't ask. <laughs> that's going back to what I originally said, meeting the man who I'm with now, who's my soulmate meeting him on the first date and telling him those things. He wasn't that is thinking, not an easy thing. He wasn't thinking, oh, goody, goody. You know, he was listening to me and he was taking it all in and I think he was just like Genuine. having rest. He was resonating with what I was saying mm-hmm. and he was thinking, he, and we've talked about this. He's He said, I never really heard of it. Like, I, at least I heard about it before. Yeah. <laughs> My mom sat me down when I was 12 and said, your dad's a swinger or whatever, yeah. right? But he, like, that wasn't part of his world or his thought process. Yeah. So for him to, like, just take it in and genuinely, like. And ultimately, what does it mean to him? Right. Like, you can lay out all of what it means to you, and they can absorb that information, and they come back going, but what does that mean to you? Like, what would you perceive me as? Right. Yeah. How do you how do you view me now? Yes. Now that I've been honest with you about my sexuality yeah. and where I want to go, and you may think I'm a bit of, you know, a crazy or a freak. Yeah. They're, like, what does that mean to him? Yeah. And for men to be honest about what it means is so powerful, too, for women. Huge. It's so attractive. Yes. 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 Absolutely. (laughs) Men being emotionally available is so attractive. See, I didn't scare him off, but that decade relationship, toxic one that I was in, that I did have threesome experiences with, that was like, he would have never have gone for anything like that. That would have been too out of his control or whatever. Next question. (laughs) I don't want to take up time. Okay. Next question. This one's good too. How do you deal with jealousy? Because I'm dipping my toes in and I am struggling. That's it. That's such a. I just that's did a first of all, question. Jealousy is a part of your nature. Jealousy is a part it's of. Un- unfortunately, it is part of our ego, and you can't you can't ditch ego. Ego no. is part of your soul. So, usually, jealousy is about a wound that has not been healed. Uh huh. Yeah. So the bigger the sense of abandonment in your relationship, because that's usually what jealousy comes up. So if you're emotionally abandoned, if you're physically abandoned, if you're feeling this this sense of um, long space between your other half and you, if your needs are not being met in a certain way, if you're feeling abandoned, the deeper the wound, the more jealousy yeah. comes out. So jealousy isn't about the fact that you're not human or you shouldn't have it is about the fame being aware that we need to feel secure yeah so jealousy is more of the looking in the mirror and going what is this really about yeah that's definitely how i so always that's say that's to the, work with the it. bottom line i say you don't deal with it you don't get rid of it you don't dig a hole and bury it in there no. the problem is, is that somewhere along the way you did dug a, dig a hole oh, and yeah. you put in a whole lot of information of who you are what you weren't abuse physical yeah all that trauma, trauma. you buried it somewhere mm-hmm. and you think you've gone through so long in life that you then wake up in the lifestyle <laughs> and it starts to poke that bear and that bear comes out of the cave. The great thing about the lifestyle is that it forces you to communicate. So yes, if absolutely. you do feel jealousy, if you'll just humble yourself and communicate that, you'll find out that what the other person is thinking is not what your yeah, self-deprecating absolutely. self is telling you. For sure. It is totally not even related. Yeah. And it actually opens up your relationship even more from better communication. Better understanding. So if you feel jealousy, just... Talk about it and be honest to the person that you love. And you'll find that you guys will just become even closer. 
And I think too, the there's this common misconception within the lifestyle, and I've been guilty of thinking this about other couples. Wow, they're perfect. Like they're on the same page. They don't have any issues. Like why aren't they jealous? And I've had a partner who's you know said, why can't we be more like them? Like why are you having these issues of jealousy? And she's not. And I think there's always issues behind closed doors. How people manage them is you know sometimes better or worse for sure. But nobody's perfect. Everybody's you know got something going on that you probably don't know about when you're watching them from afar. Yeah. And I think like when it comes to jealousy, I've kind of called myself jealous situationally because it really depends. And it's it's usually been more about it's never been about what's been happening or the people involved. It's been about my partner not giving me something that I needed in that situation. And it's been about me stepping back and saying, what do I need? What can prevent this in the future? And then it's that conversation and it's that hope that you know, we both follow through on that moving forward in the future when we put ourselves in those situations again. Mm -hmm. I agree. If we're not being intimate, if we don't feel that intimacy, that's when I tend to get more jealous of situations that we're in with other people. Mm -hmm. And everyone has different needs. And like, I found I have, I have a need to be number one, especially emotionally. And if I'm not feeling that, if my partner's on the opposite side of the room. Yeah. If I feel like we're at an event and we're meeting people and they don't know we're together because we've never been seen together at that event, it really gets to me, right or wrong. It yeah. really gets to me. Mm-hmm. And it's it's something that I want people to say, oh, you look like this, you know, great established yeah. couple. Yeah. And maybe that's not always the truth and that's why I want that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's very true. It's very valid. Never, never believe that the people that you meet somehow have it all together. Yeah, but there's like, so much shit that certainly goes behind don't. scenes. Like, nobody does. I think that's just, just nobody <laughs> does. And it is the people that look like they do are quite often sometimes the people having the worst it's, problems behind closed and, doors. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. the more they have to put on a facade, to they the more you know, the more yes. lies, the more misunderstandings, the more production that happens are usually the ones that are struggling the most. Just, I think that as a couple, it's the way you handle each situation is what brings you closer together and makes you stronger. Like, And women need to be heard. Yeah. If you're not feeling being heard in your relationship, you need to take a step back. Yeah. And you need to kind of reevaluate why you're not being heard. So in communication, it takes listening from both sides. Absolutely. And so men, listen to your ladies and ladies, listen to your men Mm -hmm. and see what happens and communicate instead of keeping it all internalized. And you just come up with your own stories and those stories aren't necessarily true. No, I talk about everything. Yeah. Lay it out on the table. And if you can't speak, write it. Yeah. I used to write notes to James all the time. Absolutely. The power of writing a letter of going, Mm -hmm. if you can't open up and say, listen, I'm really struggling with this, write it down on paper, hand it over to your lover and go, I've got something to say. And then go from there. I think that's a a good idea because that's what, that's what we used to do at the beginning of our relationship. We wrote lots of notes Mm -hmm. back and forth. Mm -hmm. Just because I didn't feel he was listening to me when it was face to face. And that was the only way that I could have him understand how I felt and also how I could get all my thoughts together in a way that I wanted to present That's it. And now and six years in, like way. we don't, re- we don't need to do that yeah. as much anymore. I just, you I'm pretty it. blunt. Um, but <laughs> but that's something you learn and acquire in a relationship too. It doesn't yeah. come in the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. You, we hear the term so many times, relationships take work. So me and my partner have said that. We've talked about that. And we've said, well, work is something that people don't like to do. Like, that sucks. You work. Like, we work for a paycheck or whatever. So we we tried to come up with this, that it's not a burden. It's an adventure. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a relationship and if it's, don't say, replace work with, it's not a burden. It's an adventure. Like, you're loving this person. You want to be on this adventure with them. So... It's not a burden. Work. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, that's where I'm going to end it because sadly, that's the end of the show. We just go down too many rabbit holes. I know. (laughs) No, but those were the good questions I actually wanted to bring attention to. So um, I'm just going to do our sign off. I want to remind everybody listening that there is a contest at the end of the show. It's a womanizer. Ooh, and you know how good that is. I do. And um, there, yeah, I don't know how to announce the winner, but just enter your information at thesexylifestyle.com and you will be entered to win 
the womanizer. Thank you to all of our amazing listeners for tuning in to Sex Uninterrupted with Just Tara today. If you enjoyed this sexy show, you can find more at sexuninterrupted.com. Don't forget, you can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want to directly support what we do, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash sexuninterrupted and join our community today. Make sure you tune in next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and listen to us live. Until then, keep it sexy. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for tuning into the show. If you enjoyed the sexy show, you can find more at sexuninterrupted.com. Don't forget that you can also follow us on Twitter at SXUninterrupted, Instagram at sex.uninterrupted, Facebook, and YouTube. If you want to directly support what we do, please check out patreon.com slash sexuninterrupted today and join our community. 